You are good to go. Okay. Good evening. This is, um, I am Paul Alpert, the planning board chair. This open meeting of the Needham Planning Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with current state regulations, in effect, at least for the next few hours, <laughs> and is being recorded. Public access to this meeting does not ensure that there will be public participation unless required by law. This meeting will not have public comment, except in connection with any hearing that is on the agenda. There is one hearing that is on the agenda for 1688 Central Avenue in Needham. Um, and when we get to it, you will see that um, we will probably shortly after opening uh, continue the hearing. And so um, um, there won't be any public comment unless there's a public comment to the motion to continue the hearing. Uh, first, we'll confirm that a quorum of the members of the planning board are present. When I call your name, please respond that you are present. And then I will introduce the planning department and other town staff. So, Gene McKnight. Here. Adam Block. Here. Marty Jacobs. Here. And uh, Natasha Estrada is not here. Um, for those participating in the in the meeting, please be aware that others may be able to see you and hear you. Anything that you share or state will be a matter of public record. All supporting materials for this meeting, including the agenda, are available on the town's website, www.needhamma.gov, unless otherwise noted. Uh, some meeting ground rules. The ground rules for this meeting are designed to allow for an accurate public record. Each of the speakers on our agenda will be introduced. After speakers conclude their remarks, each board member will be asked by name for any comment, questions, or motions. All votes will be by roll call. For each participant, please remember to state your name for the record before speaking. For each person from the public who was recognized to speak, please remember to state your name and address for the record before speaking. And gone through the preliminary matters. It is um, 723. And the first item on our agenda is a public hearing scheduled for 720. Major project site plan. Uh, Needham Enterprises LLC, 105 Chestnut Street, Suite 28, Needham, Massachusetts, the petitioner for the property located at 1688 Central Avenue, Needham, Massachusetts, regarding a proposal to construct a new child care facility of 9,966 square feet and 30 parking spaces that would house an existing Needham child care business, the Needham Children's Center. Um, I hereby open that public hearing. We have a letter received this afternoon from Evans Huber of Fries, Kramer, Rosen, and Huber, the attorney for the petitioner. And he writes, Dear Planning Board members and Ms. Newman, I am writing on behalf of Needham Enterprises LLC to request that the hearing on this matter be continued to July 20. This request is being made to allow the board time to review and receive comments from appropriate town departments regarding the applicant's recent filings. I will digress a little bit here to state that just this past Thursday, we received uh, revised plans for this project and a revised traffic report. Um, we have not had a chance to review it. And there are other town, town um, boards and departments that need to review those documents also and comment to us. Um, and so um, it makes sense to, to um, at least to, to give us all time to do that. 
uh, Mr. Huber continues, and to review the various recent comments submitted by neighborhood groups and or their council. Um, in response to, and I am digressing here, in response to that filing, we have received uh, multiple comments from uh, neighbors. Um, and um, we have not had a chance to review those comments yet either. So um, uh, it's understandable that the applicant's council hasn't had a chance to review them. He continues, and to accommodate the board's request that the applicant's traffic analysis be peer reviewed, which we have made that request uh, through our planning director. And um, Mr. Huber does confirm that the applicant has agreed to pay for the planning board's peer review of the applicant's traffic analysis. Um, and so with that, uh, I will entertain a motion. Well, first, first I'll say, is there any, is there any discussion among the planning board members about this letter? Uh, my only, my only comment is that it doesn't appear to say anything about extending the action deadline. Do we need to do that, Lee? Not, not at this point. I think if, 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 if the next time we'll have to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, before I perhaps ask, I'll, uh, perhaps I'll say that I very much appreciate the uh, the um, attention the Design Review Board has given to this project, um, and uh, in its most recent communication about this project, uh, dated um, May 14th, the Design Review Board said it's available to review the project again if additional design development is done uh, at its future meetings, and so. I, I expect and, and hope that we will uh, have further communication from the design review board, um, particularly with regard to lighting, building design, landscaping. So all the more reason for the continuance. Thank you, Jean. Um, before I open it up to the public for, for questions and comments, can I have a motion? I move, Mr. Chair, that we, um... Uh, that we continue the hearing to July 20. I believe that's the that's the correct date of our next meeting. No, our next meeting is on the 29th, but we're continuing this to July 20th. Okay, so I move, Mr. Chair, that we uh, to continue the hearing to July 20. At what time, Lee? 7:20. Uh, at 7:20 p.m. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Do we have any further discussion among the board? Do we have any um, participants who would like to make any comment? Please um, raise your hand in the, on the raise hand button. I don't see anyone, Mr. Chair, that, uh, that's called in either. Neither do I. Alex and Clay, do you see anyone? Any hands raised? Uh, there are no hands raised. Okay, so, so with that, um, We'll call the vote. Jean McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Marty Jacobs. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous by the four of us, uh, a four nothing vote. This matter is continued to July 20th at 7.20 p.m. Uh, Mr. Chair, could I ask for a, an additional motion just to clarify the issue on the peer review on the traffic study? Could I ask for a motion that the board finds that a traffic study peer review is warranted in, in this case um, and instructs the applicant um, that we're going to be moving forward with that and authorizes me to, in fact, engage a company for that purpose? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, question, I just have a, a question. Uh, how do you choose the peer reviewer, Lee? Well, we have a, um, there are a couple of companies that are on, uh, the town has a um, a, a contract with that uh, for engineering services. So um, we could use GPI or we could use, I think beta we've used in the past. I think beta we used um, as, for, as a peer reviewer for the hospital um, and GPI was the company that we used for the Mussy study, but both of them are um, under contract with the town through the engineering department. So I'm, lo I'm allowed to utilize them without going through a full procurement process. All right, thank you. Does anybody on the board have a preference between GPI and beta? 
I, I would probably have a preference towards GPI. Um, I also thought GBI did a very good uh, job with the recent Muzzy rezoning traffic report. Okay, then I'll reach out to them initially and see if they can do it within our timeline. Very good. So we have a motion um, that's been seconded. Any further discussion? Since it's part of a public hearing, uh, if, if the public... Uh, would uh, like to comment if anybody would like to raise their hand if they have a comment or a question on this. Mr. Chair, I see that um, uh, Maggie Obtruzzi. Mr. Chair, I thought we continued the hearing on this and we were not opening it. Well, we opened the hearing in order to have these motions. Okay. So Ms. Abrusi, um, I will recognize you. Again, please state your name and address for the record when uh, you have been given access to comment. Um, so Paul, this is Alex. Should I um, move Maggie over then to be yes. a panelist? Okay. Yes, please do. One second. Did it work? This is Maggie Abruzzi. It did. Good to see you. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, it's Maggie Abruzzi at 30 Bridal Trail. So, yes. Yes, Maggie. Uh, my question is, um, uh, is the board um, going to uh, deliberate or discuss at all um, the implications of uh, ethical violations? on this matter? Um, since we have told people in advance that we were, we were going to continue this hearing, um, there is nobody here from the, from the applicant side. There are probably a lot fewer neighbors than would normally be here if we were going to do that. And so we are going to defer all discussion on all items until July 20. Okay. Okay. So if it is decided that the board needs to seek um, a determination from the state ethics commission, that wouldn't happen until after discussing it on July 20th? I don't think it's fair to comment on anything that's in front of the board tonight, because as I said, um, People are not here because they anticipated that we would just be continuing the hearing. And okay. so I'm going to leave all discussion on all matters un until July 20. Okay. Thank so, you. I can't give you a better answer than that. That's okay. I appreciate it. Anything else? That was all I had. Thank you very much. Thank you. I see another hand, a Carl jo Jonason. Alex, you want to move uh, Mr. Jonason over? You'll have to unmute yourself. And um, if you want your camera on, turn it on. Jonathan, you're still muted. We still don't have your video. And his hand is now down, so. Well, it's because he's been transferred over, I think, as a as yeah. a panelist. Carl, you're you're muted. If you can hear us, Carl, we cannot see you and we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. So I have a question about this traffic study that you're going to uh, appear traffic study or that you're gonna redo or something. A peer review, yes. So I assume this is gonna take place after school is out of session. Um, well, today- So what's, what's the point of doing another traffic study 
when the kids are out of school, when that all should go and count towards the traffic that's on Central Avenue? I'm not sure whether they will be conducting an actual traffic study or whether they will be reviewing the traffic study that has been presented to us in order to comment on whether they feel that the traffic study that we received has been done properly and reaches proper conclusions. Lee, do you have a comment? Yes, it will be done. The purpose of the, of the peer review is to look at the information that the applicant has provided and to give us a separate independent opinion um, as to whether or not it's followed, you know, uh, appropriate traffic engineering practice and whether or not the consultant agrees with the recommendations or if there are deficiencies for the consultant that we hire to identify them so that the planning board can request that the applicant provide whatever supplemental information uh, the peer reviewer calls out. Okay. Does that answer your question? Sure. So since the uh, developer thinks that Central Avenue is an A rating, um, I'm having a hard time swallowing all of that. But nonetheless. Well, the, um, the, the peer reviewer will have, have the public records and the information um, that, that, uh, that is available by the town and is presented in the three versions of the traffic studies that we've received to see whether they agree that it deserves an A rating. They may come back and say that it's not an A rating. Um, we do not expect them to do their own counts, but, but they've, as we said, they, they are reviewing the traffic studies that the applicant's uh, traffic engineer has presented and uh, will comment on, on whether it was proper that they reached the conclusion that it's that it should be a rated. So Mr. Chair, you are aware that that traffic study was during, done during COVID. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely we're aware of that. Okay. That's Good it. Time. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I see a hand raised by Holly Clark. Alex, please move Holly over. Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you. Um, Holly Clark, I live at 1652 Central Avenue. My question is, um, is it possible to give the reviewer the material that uh, the neighbors have submitted for their consideration as well? In terms of there's information about the real experience of people living here and describing um, what traffic is like, what their um, reality is, so that the reviewer can, can look at that and apply weight or not as their expertise would suggest. Thank you for mentioning that and bringing that up. That's, that's all been presented to us and is therefore part of the file and part of the public record. And so I would hope that the peer reviewer would, would look at um, uh, what is part of our file with regard to the traffic. Okay. So, so the board will, will give that to the reviewer and then the reviewer will we will do whatever the reviewer does, but, but it will be available to the reviewer. Well, it's, it, it's available on the town website. We will, we will point out to the reviewer uh, that the information is there and uh, how the reviewer can, can um, access the material on the, on the town's website. Okay. Okay. So, Thank and you. I, I leave it and I leave it up to Lee Newman as to whether she wants to okay. get hard copies. Okay. Uh, oh, I, 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 whether it's hard copies or, I, I guess my request is that amongst the information the board give to the reviewer is not just the proponents' traffic studies, but also the additional information which the reviewer could then consider in making his evaluation. We will, I am asking Lee Newman to make sure that the reviewer is aware that that information is available okay. to him either by giving hard copies to the reviewer or by saying okay. you, can, you can look at those materials on the town okay. site. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Mr. Jonathan has his hand up again. And Mr. Jonathan, I'm not sure that you gave us your address last time. Carl, you're muted. Still muted, Carl. We lost Carl. Okay. He's not on the participant list anymore either. Nope, he's not on the participant list and he's not on the attendees list. He seems to have signed off. Do we have anybody else who would like to raise a hand to make a comment? Alex or Clay, did uh, did uh, Mr. Jonathan's uh, connection drop, or did we did he request to be removed? Well, he could press the leave button himself. I know. He's just gone. I I have no idea what happened. Okay. Okay. With that, um, we need to take a vote on the motion regarding the. Um, hiring of a traffic consultant to do the peer review. I'll call the roll. Jean McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Marty Jacobs. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous four to nothing. Thank you all. Um, this matter, I don't believe that unless you all have something else, I don't believe there's anything else to discuss at this time. And so this matter has been continued to July 20 at 720. Mr. Chair, I need to drop now. Thank you very much. Marty, thank you for being here for this. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. Have a good evening. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Board of Appeals hearing for uh, Thursday, June 17. We have their agenda in front of us. There are four cases. Um, let's quickly go through them. Case case number one, were there any comments or is there a motion to make no comment? I have a comment. Um, this is a request, uh, this is an application uh, to allow a three car garage. And the reason given for the three car garage is that um, a special permit has already been issued uh, for uh, the construction of an uh, accessory dwelling unit um, within or attached to this uh, single family home. Um, I want to say, and I'm not sure we want to make it a comment, but I, I'd like it to be made clear that the fact that an ADU is created is not a sufficient reason uh, to allow a three car garage. Um, in this case, however, the three car garage is set back um, to replace a, a no, excuse me, I, I don't know if it's to replace an existing garage, but it is set back um, a little over 20 feet from the front entry to, of the house and 17 feet from the front wall of the house. And I think that is a, a factor that um, um, should be taken into consideration um, as far as the very, what I perceived to be a very good design of this three car garage. So I, I might, you know, make a motion that we make such a comment. Um, but, um, you know, I'll leave it to my colleagues to decide uh, it, whether we will or not. Oh. Well, I guess I will make a motion that uh, we make uh, the comment as I outlined. Well, let me try to un understand your comment then. Is your comment that um, uh, we wish to point out that the fact of an ADU is not sufficient reason by itself to allow right. a, to to allow a three car garage 
However, the board finds a design for this particular three car garage to be acceptable to the board. That's right, exactly. Beautiful wording. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? I think that's a reasonable comment to be made to the, to the ZBA. There's no further comment. We'll take, we'll take the vote. Gene McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. And I'm I. Vote to three nothing. Lee, please send that comment for us. Uh, case number two, 34 Grosvenor Street. I'm sorry, 34 Grosvenor Road. And despite the spelling, it is not pronounced Gross Venner. It is Grosvenor. <laughs> Old English, I guess. <laughs> Do we have any comment to this, to this case, this application? And it's an appeal. Um, it's for a special permit. I have none. Adam? No. And I have a motion for no comment on this. I move no comment. I move that, and I second that motion. We'll take the vote. Gene? Aye. Adam Block? Aye. And the chair votes aye. No comment on case number two. Case number three, 68 Highland Avenue. Um, special permit seeking a waiver of strict adherence to the parking requirements and design requirements for an alteration of a lawfully pre-existing non-conforming parking lot. Do we have any comment on, on this? Hearing none, may I have a none. motion for, for no comment. I move no comment. I second that motion. Let's take the roll, Gene McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. And the chair votes aye, no comment on case number three. And lastly, case number 468 Wilshire Park. Uh, multiple requests here, including variances, a special permit, uh, and uh, well, a, a variance, a special permit, and an interpretation or amendment to a prior variance. Do we have some comment on this one. Uh, yes, I, I do have a concern about this application. Um, one of the, I think there are three separate um, uh, re forms of relief requested, and one of them is uh, for a finding at a special permit to allow um, a, an alteration or addition uh, to a prior non-conforming structure. Um, but I did not see the evidence of a prior non-conforming structure. Um, and I worry that the applicant is, cons is considering the fact of having received a variance um, to expand the property in the past uh, uh, to be the situation that creates the nonconformity, which is not in accordance with law. Um, I don't see the nonconformity. So I would make, I move that we comment that this um, application be carefully examined um, to find uh, to 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 so that the source of the uh, nonconformity that's referred to is made clear. Do I have a second? Adam. Sounds reasonable to me. Adam, you have any further discussion? Not at this time. Okay. We'll take the vote. Gene McKnight. Uh, was there a second? Did Adam second? Yes, yes. Adam seconded. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, aye. Adam Block. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We'll send that comment, please. Thank you. Okay, that takes care of our agenda item of the zoning board agendas. Um, committee appointments. So um, at our last meeting, we discussed uh, the fact that we have um, a seat on the transportation committee presently held by Stephen McKnight, which expired on May 20, on May 31 of this year. And we have a seat on the, um, uh, the design review board held by Stephen Tanner that expires on June 30. Uh, 2021. And we were talking about um, 
starting a new procedure where rather than just automatically reappointing our, um, our representatives to these committees, if they're willing to serve, that we, that we open it up and um, ask for, for our applications. Um, for various reasons that we discussed at the last meeting and we came to the conclusion that that sounded like a good idea. Um, we have now had some discussion um, with Mr. Tanner. I don't know if we've had discussion with Mr. McKnight, but, but we may have. And um, uh, we've given um, the planning director and I as chair have had some discussion about the fact that uh, opening up that procedure at this time would be very time consuming and um, the transportation committee seat has already expired. And the of, May, of May 30, is that correct, Mr. Chairman? May 31. May 31. Yeah. And the design review board seat expires in a couple of weeks. It would probably take us months to go through the process. And so um, uh, we would like to um, reconsider what, what we decided at the last meeting and uh, reappoint Mr. Tanner and Mr. McKnight to their current positions. I, I understand that they're both willing to serve another term um, and that we start the process of, of um, opening up our committee assignment when one comes due for the next time that we have one in front of the board. Um, I want to say that uh, when it comes to Mr. McKnight's appointment, I, I will recuse myself because I am his wife. Um, Mr. McKnight just walked in the door. So if there's any reason you wish to speak directly to him, he is here. My, uh, my thought of, unless you have something you want to speak to directly with or to Mr. Uh, Mr. McKnight, uh, Mr. Chair is, Lee, I would, I would probably recommend that uh, we start the process today of developing some kind of a framework for opening up the process uh, for review for whatever the next appointments are. Um, and that we should also, as part of that process, I would probably recommend if the rest of the board uh, agrees that we have some kind of a regular communication with them, perhaps on a quarterly basis to um, for them to report into us of uh, whatever issues they're dealing with, whatever challenges they have and how they've been overcoming them. Um, and, uh, and for us, to, and if they have any other comments for us or questions for us, I don't know if that's done just between the chair, vice chair, uh, the planning director and that individual member, or if they should probably appear before the whole of the board and uh, and the, which is probably the better move. And then um, uh, I, and in that way, it's kind of free, fair and open and consistent for everybody. I haven't fully thought that through, but that's my thought at this time. I'm certainly willing to start, you know, the development of a policy. I, I mean, I think we need to have a policy in place and we need to have a time frame in place so that we're able to um, advertise and, and fill the position in a timely way. And I think on all the people that we've, we've appointed have a right to know about exactly. the change in our protocol and, and how it's you know really impacting all the, uh, all the different boards. So certainly I'd be glad to work on that. In terms of having them in on a quarterly basis, I think that might be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, maybe we could do it annually and maybe we could do it through the chair and the, and the vice chair. Um, we can talk about that. Okay. I would also probably recommend that we figure out a way to post that, not just on our own site, but to have some kind of an open procedure with the public information officer. They may have some additional suggestions or outlets in which we can post it to. Okay. So. I move that we reappoint uh, Mr. Tanner to the uh, Design Review Board and Mr. McKnight to the Transportation Committee. Okay, I'm not going to accept, I'm not I'm not going to accept that motion because with um, Ms. McKnight's recusal, uh, we do not have right. a quorum. Correct. To appoint Mr. McKnight. 
So I revise my motion to move Mr. Tanner to the design review board. Do I have a second? Second that motion. Three years. The three year term. The three year term. Um, any further discussion? Jean McKnight for the vote. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. And the chair is aye. Please advise Mr. Tanner that he's been reappointed for three years. Okay. Um, with regard to Mr. McKnight, please put it on the agenda for the June 29 meeting. We'll take this up again. And I believe, well, just based on what, what I know for other boards, that even though a term may have expired, they serve until their successor is, a, is appointed. So um, please ask Mr. McKnight to continue to go to transportation committee meetings to represent us at transportation committee meetings, if there are any between now and June 29th. If he can, I mean, he's in Colorado at the moment. And we, we assume, may, well, we don't know what's gonna happen after midnight tonight, right? And we may or may not have Zoom meetings available between now and then. So. Yeah. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question that's tangentially related to this discussion? Sure. It just, it just occurred to me that one of our, the board's goals is to consider um, you know, our housing policy. And I wonder if when we're dealing and considering uh, with uh, considering inclusionary zoning and other elements of an overall housing policy review, if we if we perhaps should have a conversation with the maybe on a chair or vice chair basis, uh, or invite some our representatives from the transportation committee, you know, to appear before us at a hearing or a number of hearings. However, we're going to study um, our housing policy because there may be some elements of access to transportation that may be part of the housing conversation. Um, I, think, I think that's an interesting point and it's worth, um, we have a chair vice chair meeting with the select board coming up um, later this week. And Lee, is it my recollection that um, Kate Fitzpatrick has added to the agenda the housing? Yes. Housing issues. So yeah. let's discuss this on Thursday at our chair vice chair. Okay. Meeting. Um, I, I have a question, though, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, um, uh, is it, um, and I put this question to Lee Newman. Um, is it the intention of the planning department to establish any kind of advisory committee the way we did or by now, I think it's 15 years ago when we were studying uh, the zoning for our uh, Needham Center in Chestnut Street area? Well, I think that's a really a decision that the planning board needs to make and perhaps in consultation with the select board, but I would certainly recommend that there be a comparable entity created. Um, of diverse interests that would oversee this work. Thank you. Yeah, I thought so too, you know, I'm glad it's going, it, it will be discussed at the chair, chair vice chair meeting. Yes, it will, absolutely. I would, I've, I've been thinking about that and, you know, I, I think that a representative of the uh, school committee and a representative of the finance committee uh, are two two members that I would like to see on that advisory committee. And now Adam has raised raised the point that maybe somebody from the transportation committee should be. Should for, be for clarity, I don't know if they necessarily need to be part, that member of the transportation committee necessarily needs to be part of the ongoing work of the committee itself. But it certainly, I would think, be helpful to discuss any impacts transportation can have in forming a housing policy. Mm -hmm. I would hope that, because it, I think it's kind of within their jurisdiction or their purview that the transportation committee would be considering the recent legislation that um, that that is promoting 
um, transportation zones for housing uh, that was that was passed within the past few months by the by the legislature seems to be something that would that would be within within the purview of the transportation committee and how how our current transport our current public transportation of availability affects affects housing. Um, I'll pass that on um, if you want me to. Sure. Yeah. Please do. Um, anything else on on committee appointments at this point? So, Adam, I hope you have uh, Thursday's meeting on your calendar. Uh, I do Thursday morning. Thursday morning at eight a.m. Yes, I do. Yep. And that's uh, is that a, a Zoom meeting or are we meeting in person? That's a Zoom meeting, I think. Yes, it's a Zoom meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's not an official meeting covered by the by the open meeting law, so we can have it any way we want, I guess. And Lee, will will uh, Clay send out um, an invite for that by Zoom? Well, Clay's not. No, someone from Sandy from Kate's office will do that. Probably Sandy okay. Sincata. Okay. Um. Talk to Kate if if um. If those who are participating wish to actually get together at some place in town hall and Kate has a room, I'd be, I, I, I have no qualms about ha having an in-person meeting. Okay, well, I'll, I'll reach out to her and, and see how she wants to manage it. Yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda, um, minutes. We had one set of minutes in our package, and um, I believe that uh, we have not all had a chance to review those minutes. So uh, let's defer discussion on those minutes until until the next meeting on June 29th. That's okay with everybody. Thanks. Um, sure. I don't think we need a motion on that. We'll just just moving on. Correspondence. I didn't see any any correspondence that has come in other other than 1688 Central Avenue, from which we got a, a lot of correspondence. <laughs> Lee, is there anything else for correspondence? No, there's nothing else to add there. Okay. Report from the planning director. Uh, just a couple things. I think um, there's going to be a training session. I think Paul may participate with me um, on Wednesday. On yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it. Okay, that's fine. I, I will go and members of my staff are also going. We're going to learn more about these hybrid meetings and how they're oh. organized and how they're managed with cable and just yeah. kind of what to expect. Uh, so that training session is going to be on Wednesday, on Wednesday afternoon. Um, and I think Paul already mentioned this, uh, Thursday of this week, there's going to be a chair, vice chair meeting between the select board and, um, and members of the, of the planning board. Um, and I think we'll be talking about um, the hospital and what, it's most, what some of its plans are looking forward. And also um, a conversation on the development of a housing plan and what that strategy and implementation plan should look like. Um, and then just so you know, I've been working, I'm going to be working actually on the outdoor seating um, policy and the changes that the working group talked about making to the existing regulatory framework um, to codify some of the practices that have happened under the COVID regime um, and which are constrained under our current regulatory framework so that when the COVID exemptions uh, disappear, restaurants will be able to continue to offer this outdoor dining in a regulatory framework that makes sense. So I'm working on that and I hope to have a draft of, of, a, of, a, of what changes are required under zoning as is currently written that would be, um, that we need to go forward uh, to a, a fall town meeting on. So I'm, I'm working on that. And just a heads up, um, I understand from conversations with the town that they'll be filing their application soon for the um, redevelopment of the commons, the upgrade of the commons. Um, and so that will likely be on a planning board agenda. I'm assuming probably now that it's going to be in August, um, given the fact that we've kind of targeted uh, the July meeting for 1688 Central Avenue. Um, uh, may I ask Lee about the agenda for our next meeting on the 29th? I'd just like to get an idea of what's on the agenda for that meeting. 
Okay, so we have one uh, filing um, from Needham Gateway. This is the property where Panera Bread is located. Um, they're coming in for a special permit amendment. Their current permit, um, um, when it was issued at the time, there were concerns about parking and the adequacy of parking on that site. And so there were certain as of right uses that were specifically called out um, in their permit as not being allowed. That included restaurants, it included banks, um, and some other high pack parking generation uses. So they're coming in, they want an amendment to their underlying permit. Do they want um, a waiver? Pardon me? They want a waiver of the parking requirements specifically? They want the, they want, we, the, they want to have the restrictions on uses that can go in there that were placed on them lifted. So even though the zoning, for example, allowed banks, allowed restaurants, allowed some of these higher parking generation uses because they didn't have adequate parking on the site and there was concern for spillover. Um, and some of those uses were allowed by right. The permit itself disallows them irrespective of what the zoning says. So what they're asking is to have the condition lifted so that the only thing that's governing the uses that can go in that building are what's allowed in the zoning and not the further constraint that the planning board at the time placed on the property. So that's um, on the agenda um, for the next coming meeting. The outdoor seating um, policy will be on the agenda. And we've asked uh, Natasha to do a presentation on Nuari um, at, at, the, at the next planning board meeting. So that's, Alex, is there anything I've missed Nothing is coming to mind. Okay, good. Okay, but Panera Thanks. Bread is already there. Yes, Panera Bread is there. I mean, they, that property got a special permit at the time it was built. It was a consolidation of a couple different lots and both the Panera Bread building was put up and there's a second building on the property. Um, and so they got a special permit and that special permit placed restrictions on use on that property. And Panera and and one restriction was no restaurants, but Panera Bread is there. That's no, no, no sit down. So no sit down. No sit down. No sit down. Sit down. down. And uh, I know that the men's clothing store that you know we used to frequent there um, has been closed for quite a while. So I think there are vacancies in that building. I think there are vacancies in that building. I think that their primary tenant is at the Web. Web. I can't think of the the names. Frank Web. Yes, I think that they may be leaving and moving to another location, so that building might open up. So I think they are, of course, because that's the uh, that's on the uh, zoning board of appeals. Remember we talk? That's one of the zoning board of appeals. The third item, uh, right. Web is sixty-eight Highland, Highland Avenue. Avenue. Yeah, go. they're moving, so they're going out of that building. Um, so that's going to be a vacancy. And I think they probably want to just make sure that when they're trying to market the property, um, that they have the flexibility that, that they think they need to be able to find tenants to retenant the space. Yeah. And if it was, if it was a, uh, another restaurant, what would happen in terms of the parking requirement? Well, the parking requirement for the restaurant is going to be greater than the parking requirement for retail. So the parking requirement for retail is one parking, which is how for the building was predominantly authorized. So that's one parking space for every 300 um, square feet. The parking spaces requirement for a restaurant is one, there's 10 parking spaces for the takeout station, plus one parking space for every three seats in the restaurant. So restaurants generally um, per square foot have a higher parking demand sure. than retail use. And so, because it was already on the wire or receiving waivers, there were certain uses that um, were not allowed on their face in that permit at the time. So if a restaurant pragmatically actually went in, or if a, if a landlord, if a, uh, a restaurant tenant was the only viable tenant that the landlord had in a reasonable period of time to uh, tenant up the uh, space, to rent up the space, and there is no fewer spaces available uh, I mean, there's no spaces available. They are required to seek a waiver, correct? I think the concern was at the time when that was done that there was that they that you wanted to ensure that there was sufficient parking on the property itself uh, to accommodate the uses, and they didn't want to have any spillover. And some of the people who own property 
around that development at the time were concerned with those issues. So that's that's basically what the what the hearing is about um, on the 29th. Okay, thank you. I apologize for being late. I thought because the we didn't have an agenda item, the meeting was canceled. So I apologize. That's okay. It's a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> So let the record show that uh, Natasha Espada has uh, appeared. Has finally, got, has finally arrived. Has finally and arrived. with that, she moves to adjourn. Uh, well, um, <laughs> you, but you, you're not actually moving to adjourn. I'm mean, just talking about it because. Uh, so would you would you like a summary of uh, what we've done so far? What we've done, Natasha? Sure. Or? I'm sorry. I I really apologize. I'm sorry. I just got completely confused. <laughs> So, yes. Uh, uh, so briefly, uh, I'll try to run through it. Um, on the Board of Appeals cases, um, we voted no comment on cases two and three. Okay. And um, in case one, we are making the comment that um, uh, we're pointing out to the Zoning Board of Appeals that the fact of an ADU is not in and of itself a, a reason to allow a third a third garage, uh, a third car in the garage. Um, however, the design for this particular um, uh, request, we the planning board finds finds to be, I don't remember if we use the word pleasing or acceptable, but but we were in favor of this particular application. We just wanted to make it clear that um, uh, we didn't want the ZBA just to say, oh, if there's an ADU, they they get a third space. Uh, in the garage. Um, on committee appointments, um, we discussed the fact that because of timing, it didn't make sense to, to now require that we open it up. Uh, we, we have asked um, the planning director to, to start working on the uh, format for how we will go forward to um, uh, open it up. And so uh, we did vote to, to re reappoint Stephen Tanner to the Design Review Board. Um, because you were not here, Jean McKnight recused herself on the reappointment of Stephen McKnight. So we didn't have a quorum. So we deferred that in, until June 29th. Would you want to reconsider that? Natasha, you, I'll leave that up to you as to whether you're ready to vote to reappoint Stephen McKnight tonight or whether you'd rather that we defer it until June 29th. I don't know that it really matters all that much. I don't think it matters. I think we can reappoint. I think I think just moving forward, letting everyone know would be great and just, just opening it up. But I, I, I think because we were doing it in such a quick way, but I think we can reappoint tonight. Then can I have a motion? Motion to reappoint Steve. Re Stephen McKnight. Stephen McKnight back to the um, design review. Uh, Transportation. No. Transportation Committee. Oh, sorry, transportation committee. But there was there were a couple for the design review as well, right? That's yes. he's been, we've we reappointed uh, him. We had a quorum for that one. The three of us voted to reappoint Steve I, for that. I recuse myself naturally from the vote for Steve since he's my husband. Yeah. Ah. I don't know if that's a good reason or not, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Do it I have depends, a question, Adam? It depends on who has dinner responsibility, I think. <laughs> Well, we'll go into that. <laughs> the question of who's going to pick up the takeout. <laughs> Adam, do I have a second to the motion? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? I'll call the roll. Adam Block. Aye. Natasha Espada. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous. Please let Miss um, Newman, please let Mr. McKnight know <laughs> that he's been reappointed. To the transportation committee. Um, I, may, I may let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we had one set of minutes, and uh, uh, we have not all had a chance to review them, so so we're deferring that until June 29th. And uh, there's no correspondence, and um, I'll let you read the minutes about the planning director's report. <laughs> We discussed it. Um, excuse me, Paul, but you didn't mention anything about 68 Wilshire Park and our concern about the prior non conformity. Oh, that's right. That's right. On, on, um, on item four on the ZBA agenda, 
um, we made a comment that um, uh, the re relief requested included, um, I don't remember if, it, oh, a special permit on, on an item that was allegedly a pre-existing non-conforming use. And um, we pointed out that we didn't really see any evidence of the pre-existing non-conforming existing. And so we asked the ZBA to look into that more carefully. Um, but, but the other variance requests, um, we essentially had no comment on. So if you got all that, that brings you up to date. <laughs> and uh, I know we're at the end of our agenda now, uh, but there is something I'd just like to mention. Um, I know that at our last meeting, uh, we decided that uh, the planning uh, board and I suppose the planning department uh, will not engage this year in a study or restudy of accessory dwelling units. Um, but I, I'm involved with Eco Justice Needham housing group and a, a group of about four um, people involved with that group uh, wish to continue that uh, as our study is something we're studying. And um, there, um, a woman named Wendy Blum is a, um, a video person and is organizing uh, a video. Um, I presented as part of that video, it was recorded before I left, um, essentially the same background uh, that led up to the town meeting vote uh, of about a year and a half ago to adopt the ADU. And just, just to give the background um, on that presentation. So I wanted to let the uh, planning board know that personally, uh, I feel it's okay, and I hope it is, for me to be involved uh, with this organization in, uh, in, in, in continuing to study uh, accessory dwelling units in Needham. I have to give some thought to that, Jean. I'm not gonna give you an answer right now. Okay. Well, I just want, didn't want you to be surprised um, when you get an email saying there's a video and it's on a certain date and Jean McKnight is a participant. I just, um, if, if you don't mind, and don't take this the wrong way, um, just try to, try to be cognizant of any potential conflict of interest that may arise in your two roles as a member of the planning board. And a member of Equal Justice Needham because they do, they do take up issues that will be in front of, in front of this board. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure since Equal Justice Needham is not a nonprofit organization; it's just a group of people. So I'm not quite sure of how the conflict of interest law applies, but I will be uh, aware well, I'm of not that. Saying, I'm not saying that there's a conflict of interest law violation at all. I'm sensitive to an appearance of conflict of interest, and right. um, you know that they 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 did speak at town meeting on zone on a zoning matter, um, and they are very interested in the affordable housing uh, situation that um, uh, we will we will be taking up, and they are interested, as you were mentioning in uh, making revisions to our ADU bylaw. And so these are all issues that um, I'm not asking you now to recuse yourself either on the board or on equal justice in their discussions. I'm just asking you before you do proceed to just kind of think long and hard about it. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you for that guidance, Paul. Uh, so we are actually kind of still on report of planning director and board members. So thank you, Jean, for, you know, the, the report as a board member. Any other items that the, that the board members would like to bring up at this time? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Let's take a vote. Jean McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Dr. Spada? Aye. Chair, aye. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Good meeting. Thank you.